I'm Daisy Victoria. I love creating fantasy and historical costumes, and the one beside me today is really a bit of both. It's definitely historically based, but it has like a fantasy, fantastical element to it. I'm going to show you guys a little bit of how I made it, and also all the layers that my mannequin is wearing. I just want to start off by saying that I love this gown. Like. <laughs> One of the cool things about being able to make my own gowns is that there's like a feeling and I think that people experience it maybe when they find their dream wedding dress or a, you know a dream prom dress or something and I get to experience that every single time that I make a gown. So my inspiration for this gown was <laughs> we're gonna say the Holy Roman Empire so that exists kind of around what is modern-day Germany and surrounding areas I constructed the gown the same way as the tutorial that I have I'll link to it in case you guys want that and that is on just you know a basic Renaissance kernel so you can adapt it like I've added these crazy sleeves this is the hem and it's so cool I really like it. Um, this chemise has super long sleeves, which you will see. That is so that I can puff them through here. And that is sort of an experiment based on some things I had seen in period artwork. I really like how it's turning out, how it's like really filling up these slashed areas. So I'm very happy with it so far. Oh! By the way, I almost forgot to show you it has pockets. So one thing I love about doing pockets this way is that all of the weight of the pockets is on your waist because the pockets actually tie onto your waist. So that way there's never going to be anything bulky on the dress itself like pulling on it. The drape of the dress is preserved while you can still load down your pockets. And because the pockets are underneath the skirts, no one can see them, so they're actually totally concealed, and I think that's pretty cool. So I'll show you guys a little bit more about how I made this gown. Here is the sketch I did for the outfit I want to make. My main fabric for this gown is a silk dupioni, and it's really cool. It's actually got burgundy fibers going in one direction and blue fibers going in the other, so it ends up having this sort of like iridescent purple sheen. Now I decided to pre-wash this fabric and if you don't pre-wash your dupioni it'll be a little bit stiffer but I'm gonna be wearing this to Ren Faire and I wanted it to be like just a little bit more um, <laughs> able to be washed. <laughs> so in order to prevent any later shrinkage I decided to pre-wash the fabric. Um, that is something you can do with Dupioni. Um, it does take washing, so um, just keep in mind it'll be a little bit less stiff if you wash it. To make this dress, I'm actually using the same method I have in my Renaissance Kirtle tutorial. So if you guys want to get all the lowdown on making your pattern to fit you and going through step-by-step -step, um, illustrated sewing instructions, I will put that in the description. So you're welcome to do that. Um, if you want to kind of see some highlights of how I sew one together, this will show you not only that, but a fantasy variation. So these are my front and back bodice pieces here. The front is um, straight down in front, and I did cut this a little bit over so there's going to be a gap in the center front. Since my fabric is really thin, this is like an, a really thin dupioni, um, I decided to use this canvas weight, um, it's a cotton, and that's going to be just behind each front piece so it's nice and sturdy, and that's going to give me a better hand, I feel, because I'm going to put boning in this one, so I don't really want to put that just on the dupioni because it could poke through and then I would be really sad because I'm spending so much time making this beautiful dress and I don't want it to be ruined, so I'm going to put canvas in it. And for the lining, I have used a linen. And I'm actually not lining the skirt, though I do have a petticoat I'm gonna wear under it. I am, however, lining the bodice. And I already sewed this bodice lining together. 
so you can kind of see what it looks like right now. It's got the shoulder seams, the side seams, and the back seams sewn. This is the modesty panel I'm going to be putting in the front of my bodice, and that's because the bodice doesn't close all the way, and I've decided that I want it to be the same color as the dress. Also, it's lined in linen. Now the sleeves are going to be a particularly fun part. So this is something I'm kind of experimenting with for this project. So I've got the sleeves in sections and then basically I'm going to have like the loopy things in each section which you sometimes see in the period German gowns. So I've been working on my bodice a little bit and I'm about ready to do the boning, which I do pretty early on in the construction of my gown because I like to just get the bodice done. Um, I went to grab boning for my bodice and realized I'm actually completely out of the sizes I need for the front. So I placed an order for new boning that should arrive in several days, however, I'm feeling a little bummed because I honestly wanted to do the bodice today, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stick the bone casings on there, and then I'm going to just move on because honestly I have some parts that are going to take a lot of time, like the sleeves, uh, <laughs> let's just say doing all the easy parts first is a way to procrastinate the sleeves, so I think uh, I'm going to have to work on the sleeves. So to do the boning casings, I'm using twill tape. I'm going to put the bone casings in the lining and that's so that I can, you know, stitch this down on the machine and it's not going to be visible. <laughs> um, I like when it's totally invisible. And then I'm going to put bone casings along these side seams. Now the front ones can be a little bit tricky because you know you want room to actually sew your finishing on the edge. I'm going to be using bias binding. So I know that I only need about one half of an inch for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave myself about a half inch there. So that's where the boning channels are going to go. These front ones are going to be one half inch boning, so that will help to hold the bust in place. And then the back ones are all going to be a quarter inch because I don't need so much support on those. I just need it to kind of hold the shape of the bodice so that it's very rigid. So now I've started putting the sleeves together. <laughs> so basically I sewed each of these for just this section with piping. Now, how did I figure out how to cut these? Well, I decided I wanted seven strips per area, so I just took this total width or length, whatever you want to call it, and I subtracted out my seam allowance on the sides, and then I divided that by seven. Then I found that the piping took up about a quarter inch, so I subtracted a quarter inch off of that to figure out how wide each fabric piece needed to be. And then I just kind of guessed like how big I thought this <laughs> should be. Um, so I'll try those, you know, and make sure I like them in the final. And so that means that each section has different widths, like the bottom by the wrist, they're actually the narrowest, and then the top here that goes up to the shoulder are the widest because they all have seven and the arm gets wider as you go up. So I sewed all of those, <laughs> that took a really long time, and that's only one of three sections. So I got myself into a lot of work here, but that's okay. So then after I did that, I sewed it onto this section of the sleeve, and they're lined, so 
you know, I've got a lining also. And now I'm going to sew them on to the upper sleeve section just the same way as I did the lower sleeve section. Alright, so I did that. Now I've got this. It's my sleeve. This is the center. So this is the elbow. Ooh. So now I'm going to make a bunch more of these that go down here. And then there's this little part that goes on the top of the hand. And then I'm going to make a lot more of them that goes up here, and then that will tie onto the shoulder of the dress. So I decided to make the sleeves flat before sewing them into tubes, because I thought that would be a lot easier to place all of these because they're very small. I did make a, I did make a version of these sleeves that only had these at the very top by the shoulders, and I did sew the sleeves into a tube first and it worked really well. But there's just so much going on in these I thought it would be easier to do it this way. I think that now I'm going to stop for the night because it's actually quite late. I may do a little more pinning if I feel up to it, but I think for the most part I'm going to leave this and pick it up tomorrow. Alright, it's the next day and we are back! So I actually did do a little work after I turned off the camera. I pinned all the rest of my strips together and I started sewing them. This morning when I got up I finished the small ones that go at the bottom. So I'll show you how I put these together. So I've got a strip of the silk and then a strip of my lining which is the linen. And on these, because I'm putting piping on the edges, the camera's not wanting to focus when I bring it really close, so hopefully you guys can kind of see I've got the piping. So this is the part that's actually the piping that'll stick out, it's towards the um, inside. And the part that's flat that you sew is catching in the seam, and then I sew these with a zipper foot. So if you were going to make these without piping, it would be even easier actually, you don't have to put that in there at all. And in fact, I think you could make like one round piece, you know, if you weren't putting anything on the seams because then you could just sew a tube, you know, and turn it right side out. Um, if you want to line it, obviously you need a seam on both sides so you have the lining. So I sew those and then I turn them right side out using this safety pin. Um, and then I iron them flat and they look like this, only, you know, these will be much thicker. <laughs> So uh, to turn them with the safety pin, I'll show you guys that part too. Let me sew one of these. I sewed my first two strips from the top of the sleeve that goes by the shoulder, and I'm going to show you how I turn these. So I take a safety pin, open it up, and when you put it through here, you want to catch like through some sturdy stuff where it's not going to just rip out. So I like to go where the seam is and through like a big chunk of that piping or like a, a whole bunch of fabric if I don't have piping. And then I just kind of dive that safety pin down and now feed it through. And eventually it comes out the other end. And then you can just kind of go like that and remove the safety pin. And it's turned right side out. So that's what I've been doing for all of these. I have seven per section, so 14 per section on the two sleeves and three sections. So I have 42 of these. So far I've already spent about eight hours and I'm not done yet. So these sleeves are very labor intensive.
And this is the sleeve. I put a hook and eye at the bottom here too so I can make it a little bit tighter. Wow. <laughs> I'm really excited about this. This is so cool. Moving back to the bodice. <laughs> So at this point, I am waiting for my boning to come in, but that doesn't mean I can't start finishing the edges. So I decided to put this fabric, this contrast, as a bias binding. So I've done a video on bias binding for corsets. It's the same process here. Um, basically for the armholes, I sewed my bias binding into a tube the same size as the armhole. So I'm going to go ahead and bind those, and then I'm going to bind all these edges so they're all going to have the contrasting trim. I think that's going to be really cool. Um, and then I'll actually have to wait for my boning to arrive, and I'll put that in, and then I can attach the skirt. I did put the lining in here inside the bodice, so I've got the outer layer and then the lining. Um, so that the right side faces out on the inside and the outside. And then these are my boning channels, which will have the boning inserted. At long last, my lace has finally arrived for the bottom of the dress. It's really pretty. I'm, I'm pretty excited. So this is the skirt. I went ahead and sewed the rectangular pieces together, and then I just sewed this to the bottom. So this is my lovely brocade, and then I put a layer of sequined gold trim there. The lace is just going to go above there. so like so, and I'm gonna go ahead and pin this on. So here's my bodice. What I've done is divided the bottom into 30 sections of equal distance, so 15 on each side. And then here is my skirt. It's really big. I divided the top evenly into 32 sections. I have two extra sections and that's because I'm going to have extra pleats that kind of go across the front opening because the bodice doesn't quite close in the front. It's going to sit like that. And then there will be pleats right here too. So I'm just going to pin it together. First step is to find the front opening on the skirt. Aha! I've got it! So I'm just going to match up my pins because they belong together. So once that is pinned on, you just need to take these and roll them into pleats. You can roll them all in the same direction or you can roll them so that they go opposite directions like always toward the front or toward the back. All right, so I've got my boning and I'm gonna put it in my bodice. These are the boning pieces I will be using. These are all flat steel boning and the reason I'm using flat steel is because with these Renaissance gowns, the silhouette is supposed to be very rigid 
it's not like the Victorian corsets which bend with your body. So for these guys, whether it's a corset or just the gown bodice, um, you want the flat steel boning. Now usually I insert the boning before I attach the skirt. However, I was a little bit pressed for timing on the shipment and because I didn't want to be rushing at the end, I went ahead and sewed the skirt onto just the front layer so that I can still access where the boning goes. So all my boning is inserted. These are my boning channels, they got the boning. So now I'm going to attach this. If I had not attached the skirt already, I would pleat the skirt on now. Since I already attached the skirt, I'm basically going to sew that seam again to pick up the other layer of the bodice. So that's attached! Yay! So what I also did ahead of time was sew this trim on here, and I did that by hand, so just little hand stitches. And I normally would do that after I um, attach the lining and the skirt. I did attach the skirt first and then do this trim. So if you're wondering why did I attach the skirt first when it really doesn't take that much time to pleat on a skirt, it's because I also add finishing touches like this and like the lacing rings to apply and I wanted to make sure all that hand sewing was done um, yesterday and my boning didn't get here till today. So now the dress is done! <laughs> um, so the pleats come across here, you know, to fill that little section. And then I've got a little ribbon here that ties the dress skirt together and I made this piece that goes behind the lacing area. So then this is my lacing ribbon, which goes through all these little lacing loops that I sewed on to the inside of the dress. And we're gonna lace it up actually on the mannequin because if I do it right now, I'll have to unlace it to put it on her and I only wanna do it once. So we're gonna do it together on the mannequin. Let's go. Now I already dressed her partially during the week while I was sewing. So she's wearing the chemise and then this is the partlet I created so it just goes on over the chemise. Partlets are really nice because that way you only need the one chemise but you can get multiple necklines. So you know you don't have to have a separate chemise which is several yards of fabric. You can just have a separate partlet which is just a very little piece of fabric. So over the chemise she's wearing this petticoat which will give the skirt more volume and actually under that she's got pockets. I don't know if you can see so well here because I've got a huge petticoat and I've got slits in my skirt here so that's how I reach in to use the pocket. Okay so let's put the actual gown on. We're going to do a little bit of unhinging the arms <laughs> actually to get it on. Okay, so what I'm going to do is actually take the arms off first because I tried seeing if I could just finagle it in there, you know, and like unhinge them. It didn't work, so they're coming off. Alright, dress is going on. Now this bodice is spiral laced, that is period for the renaissance. Even though it's a fantasy gown, I want to keep with the renaissance inspiration as much as possible. And to me that includes those little details like having the correct lacing style.
And then you will have some string left after lacing. I just tuck that inside the bodice right there. So it looks great already, but we have one more addition. Sleeves! Now I made the chemise sleeves really, really long and that's so they'll puff through all these little areas. So let's try it. This is actually the first time I made my chemise sleeves so long um, because it's also the first time I did such a large area of poofing. So we're going to try it out together. Now the sleeves tie onto the gown using these little metal loops I've attached. There's one on the sleeve and then a corresponding loop on the gown. And you can also pin the sleeves on instead of tying them on that loop. And I find that pinning them on is a great way to deter creepy guys from hugging you because you've got pins in your shoulder and they'll get stabbed if they hug you. We're going to tie these on because I don't want to stab anybody.